Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby. I'm with Fitness is Medicine. Today we're going to do another great workout you can do in your home. Um, I've set up a workout today where we use a band, a set of dumbbells, a fit ball if you have one, um, and then a smaller ball, and then a loop band. Um, if you don't have a loop band, you can just use a regular TheraBand and get it all. Um, you can either tie it in a knot or you can hold it. I'll explain it when we do it. Uh, but that's it. That is all we're going to need for today. Come into these workouts warmed up and ready to go. Do five to ten minutes of a cardio workout. Get your heart rate up, get your muscles warmed up, and come in here ready to move. Okay, so we're going to circuit through a set of exercises here. And I've got my band set up here to do a row. So find somewhere to loop your band or your tube that's about chest height. Today we're going to do a regular row. So remember to always start with a good athletic stance. Your knees are just bent a little bit, your hips are back, tummy tight, shoulders down and back and ready to move. All right, so we're gonna squeeze back nice and slowly, keeping everything in line here with your shoulders and your neck. Four, keep that tummy engaged. Five, thinking about squeezing those shoulder blades together as you pull back. Driving those elbows towards the back of the room. Nine and ten. As always, with your bands, you can scoot back to add more resistance. You can scoot forward to add a little less. You can double up bands. And of course, if you have a weight machine at home, you can use your weight machine instead. Okay, then we're going to do some ball squats. So I've got my ball here. We're going to put it against the wall. If you don't have a ball and you can just do a wall squat and hold it so it's going to be the same form same motion um, you're going to want your feet out just a little bit so that you're against that wall and when you go down you want your weight in your heels and then sitting back like you're going to sit into a chair um, commonly sometimes people will want to do this type of thing and see how my hips are forward and then my knees are going over my toes you want to sit back into that like you're going to sit down into a chair chest tall Shoulders relaxed for thinking about pushing through your heels, squeezing your glutes as you come up. Eight, and if you're holding that wall squat the whole time we're doing these ball squats, it's gonna be a really good, good exercise for those, those quads and those glutes too. You can think about squeezing those glutes to help assist those quads. One more, 10. All right, good. Next, we're going to do some biceps curls. So find um, a couple dumbbells. We'll do both of them at the same time. If they're on the floor, remember to pick them up with good form, bending your knees and your hips. Let's do this in um, either a tandem stance or a single leg stance or a staggered stance if one of those is too much. All right, slowly we're going to do both arms at the same time. I like incorporating balance into other exercises. Um, when we're needing our balance, generally it's when we're doing other things. We're carrying groceries, we're walking down the sidewalk, we're looking through your, our purse, you know, something like that. Talking with friends. So it's good to sort of multitask. Also, this requires your abs to have to engage to hold you up steady, nice and level and you're calling in more muscles, more muscle groups, and ultimately burning more calories. And 10. Now with these, you're making sure your arms go all the way straight at the end. Don't end here, end here, and then make sure if you feel like it's getting too heavy and you start kind of using your back to pull it up, grab a smaller weight, and then make sure your neck isn't trying to engage while you're doing those two. Keep those shoulders down, only working those biceps. If your hands are out like this, towards the front like I just did, that's great. You can also turn it so the dumbbells facing front, that's a little bit easier. Um, whatever feels better on your neck and shoulders and elbows and things like that. Okay, now we're gonna do a monster walk. So I've got this band that I talked about. We're gonna put it around your ankles. If you don't have a loop band, you can put a band underneath your feet and then just hold it tight to add some resistance. So we're gonna work on those hips <clears throat> and we're going to do a monster walk. So I'm going to have you, I'm gonna make sure my screen stays 
a week. So I want you to step forward and out to the side. So we're gonna step forward and out to the side. Again, a little bit of an athletic stance. My knees and my hips are, are engaged, bent just a little, abs engaged. To, so kind of bring it towards each other and then back out to the side. Keep your toes pointed straight forward. So we'll go forward 10. <clears throat> so I'm gonna turn around. So you can just keep going forward if you're walking down a hall or across your room. Try to keep your chest up nice and tall. And then once we've done about 10 on either side, we're going to go backwards. So the same thing, you're gonna kind of bring your feet towards each other and then out to the side. Keeping those knees and hips bent just a little, all those muscles stay engaged. And your toes still pointing straight forward. All right, good. That, as you are probably feeling, is a good glute exercise. Okay, now we're gonna lie down on the floor and do a core exercise. Grab a ball, like a um, just a small playground ball or a, even a pillow or something small that you can um, transfer back and forth. This, um, sometimes I do this with a fit ball, but a fit ball can feel really big for this too. So on your back, we're going to think about flattening that back to the mat. So you're squeezing your abs across the top here, a little bit of a pelvic tilt. We're going to take this ball and we're going to pass it back and forth between our hands and our knees. So try to maintain when your arms and your legs go out, maintaining that flat back right here. Each time you come together, you can re-situate. Breathe. The more you have your knees bent, the easier this will be. So if you're here, that'll be easier on your back, easier on your abs. The more you have your legs out straight, the harder it'll be. So if you have any existing back pain, keep your knees in as much as possible, those feet in as much as possible like this. If you wanna challenge yourself a little bit, you can Straighten out those legs a little more. Or even alternate. Do one in and one out. We're gonna do one more each way. Good, okay. Now, importantly, you're trying to keep that back flat to the floor so that your abs are doing all of the work and your back isn't taking over. So if you do have any back pain, remember, bend those knees tighter, start over, resituate, get yourself set. And then um, if those are really difficult and you, you just can't quite get it with your back, you can also touch your feet down each time you transfer. Um, and if you still can't get it, send me a message and I'll send you something different to do and a couple other cues that you can do um, to keep your back healthy and happy with that exercise. Okay, now we're gonna stand back up. So remember to stand up slowly. Make sure you don't get dizzy or lightheaded. I'll raise this back up. We're gonna do a little bit of agility. So we're gonna do a grapevine. So, oops, I need to raise that up just a little more. Back and forth across your room. If you've got a long hallway, you can just keep going um, down the hallway. We're gonna cross over front and then cross over back. Sometimes this is called karaoke, grapevine, front, back, front. And then once you feel comfortable, you can pick up the pace a little bit. And then add a little bit more of an upper body twist too. So you're twisting towards the front leg a little bit. And then I would do this for about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on, you know, if you have to keep going back and forth across a small room like I'm doing, that's fine. You can just kind of time yourself for 30 seconds or you can go up and down a long hallway. You know, if you've got a, a longer 
span. You can just do it a few times back and forth. It's a good way to open up those hips and it's good agility, working on some quick footwork. Okay, we're going to end with some neck stretches today. So we're gonna sit on a ball. You can do this seated or standing. I'll bring this down right here. There's a few different ways um, that we can stretch your neck. My favorite is to, first of all, get your neck and shoulders in a good position. Take one hand and put it in the small of your back like this. And then we're going to tilt your ear, your opposite ear towards that shoulder. So now the key is staking, taking those steps to get your neck and shoulders in alignment to start. So your shoulders are down and back and breathe. So you want to hold this for about 30 seconds. Now you're tilting your ear towards your shoulder. Now you can kind of put some variation into this from here. So start with this. Anytime you're doing any neck stretches, move slowly, no quick movements. Um, in order to stretch a little bit more on the back, you can look down just a little bit, kind of cast your eyes. You're still doing the neck. If you just cast your eyes down, before you make any movements, keep breathing. And then you can cast your eyes up. Generally though, it's the down that's going to make the most difference because it's tightness coming across the neck and shoulders, which is so common. Cast those eyes and then you can even kind of tilt your chin just a little bit more. Find the spot where you're finding the most tightness and then hold it there. You can do, you know, each one of those for 30 seconds. Now we'll do the other side. Put, put back your hand in the small of your back. And if that's hurting or if it's not possible, you can just reach your hand up to the side. Same thing, we're just trying to lengthen this muscle here. Breathe. Tilting that ear right towards that opposite shoulder. And when you do that, make sure you're not raising your shoulder up. It's instinctive for some reason. Sometimes people want to raise that shoulder up to their ear. Just We're just trying to relax here. The other thing is if you have tight, more tightness on one side or the other, end on that side. So like if my left side here was more tight than my right, I would want to do this one second because when you tilt towards that side, it kind of can tighten it up just a little bit. So now I'm going to cast my eyes down. And then I'm going to move my head down just a little. So find that spot for you and breathe. Okay, another one you can do to help stretch all up in through that upper neck, upper back area is to just round your shoulders forward. And then again, this is, um, you're keeping them down, just rounding them forward. So it's a really kind of a subtle movement where you're kind of thinking about spreading your shoulder blades away from your spine. So you're just rounding and depressing your shoulders down and stretching that way. It should be stretching all through here. Similarly, you can stretch those areas by grabbing something right in front of you. I gotta make sure my camera is alive here and pull back. So you can use a door jam. Um, so it's a similar exercise where you're just thinking about spreading your shoulder blades across, letting them come away from your spine. Breathe. Okay, now one more which I find really effective, is to take your arms, you're gonna kind of cross your arms across like this. So you're gonna put one elbow on top and then try to put your palms together. So you get into this position and then settle your shoulders down away from your ears. So you're almost pushing down with your elbows, bringing that so that it's spreading these muscles across the top of your shoulders, really stretching them out and breathe. If you can't get your hands together, that's okay. You can still kind of push 
down with your elbows. Holding that position. Okay, now you're gonna cross your arms the other way. So put your other elbow on top, get your hands together, get your palms together, settle your shoulders down, press your elbows down a little bit and breathe. That should really be pulling right across here. And breathe. Now these are stretches that you can do multiple times throughout the day. You could do them in the morning after you get up, do them again, you know, a little later. Um, you may feel as the day goes on, there's a different, you know, different times when you feel you're a little bit more limber or able to do them a little more efficiently. It is good to do them after you've warmed up a little bit. So even if you um, at least do some shoulder circles or move around just a little, um, just to kind of open up those blood vessels and get things moving and then do those stretches or at the end of these videos, after a walk, something like that. All right, let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you next time. Thank you everybody.